So I know someone who tried to kill themselves a couple years ago and never told anyone but me. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. Today I just want to talk with you about a story that is not mine to tell, but I'm going to tell it anyway because I'm going to keep it anonymous. So like I said in the skip before the intro, um, I, I know someone who a couple years ago tried to kill themselves. Um, they were working with the youth and they had went to school for working with the youth. So they finally, they finally get their degree and they get this job and they think that it's going to bring them fulfillment. And actually the reason this person went to school is because they were working at a, a professional place, it's a professional place. And, and the person wanted to excel and they asked the manager, like, how can I get to be on that side of the wall? You know, like where, where the people are making the big money and not a grunt. And they said, go to school. So this person did. Now I'm so against that and for so many reasons, but, but this is one of the reasons. So this person went to school, um, got the degree, got a job working with youth, hated it and, and their life so much that one day before they were going to go to their job, to, to their, to the children, they, um, started their, their car in the, uh, a bunch, a bunch of medication, prescription medication and started their car in the garage and waited. And I can't remember exactly how this person was found, but they were found, um, by, uh, a loved one. And, and that was it for their career. They never went back. They never talked to the youth. They were gone from the youth's life. And the youth, I feel so stupid, like in that movie. Is it possible to two youths? Uh, uh, to what? Uh, uh, what was that word? Uh, what word? To what? What? Did you say utes? Yeah, two utes. What is a ute? Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Two youths. The youths. These these children were left wondering what happened to this person that they had seen every day. So, um, so 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 that was that was a suicide attempt, right? What is amazing to me is what I'd like to talk with you about today is why, why did they not tell their closest set of friends? And oddly enough, this person has friends. You would think maybe, I mean, I, I would think if someone was going to take, well, and this isn't necessary either, but if someone's going to take their life, they might be lonely. They might not have anyone, but actually we can kind of get into that because this person didn't, let's call this person Bob or Roberta, whatever you want to think of them as Bob, a pen blew up on me today. Bob had this thing happen. And then, and then was so what, so what that they couldn't tell their friends. So I've thought of it as ashamed. They're so full of shame over what they try to do that they can't even bring themselves to say the words out loud to people that count. But the bottom of shame, the bottom of anything dirty is fear. There's two reasons people are afraid. And in the comments section, tell me if I'm wrong. It is the fear of losing something that you have, or it is the fear of not getting something you want. And I think one's more, they're, they're similar, but they're different. So I think of the thing, like, I, I'm afraid to approach this person. I want to talk to this person. I'm attracted to this person, but I'm afraid that they'll reject me. I'm afraid I won't get what I want. So I'm going to not do that thing. It's, um, it's weakness in a different way. It's not, I, I believe it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's the lack of cultivation within oneself to be able to handle the abuse of the word no, or not interested, or you suck, or whatever. Like, I'm not going to try to get this job because I want it so bad, and they could say no. It's just a whole different thing. So I don't really want to talk about that today. 
I want to talk about the fear of losing something. So Bob, I imagine, didn't want to tell his friends that he had tried to kill himself because he was afraid he would lose his friends. And then I just said before, you would think that someone that was going to kill themselves wouldn't have a strong community. Would that be a strong community? If you're so afraid to tell your friends this, this most, the most impactful, crazy shit you've ever attempted in your life, if you're afraid to reveal that to your friends, how close are they? What kind of a community do you have? I would say maybe not the strongest community. And actually, Bob has, has talked about how he feels like he wants more in friendships. Guess what Bob doesn't do? Try to get new friends. Isn't that funny? A fear of revealing oneself to the friends for fear of losing and a fear of going out to make new friends because he might not get it. I mean, this is all presumptuous, but I, I'm trying to trace this down the rabbit hole. So then it got me thinking of what I am afraid of. And there's two things I want to talk about here. I am genuinely afraid of not being able to pay my mortgage. I, I, I always try to be a couple months ahead because I'm so scared. Like if I pay, so it's, it's July 2nd. If I were to pay on July 1st, I would feel so weird about living in this house for th like I have 30 days that I own it or the bank doesn't take it from me. So I always try to be a couple, a couple of mortgage payments ahead, but this is how it fucks me up. And this is, maybe you can relate to this. Sometimes there has been times at work where the person in charge has spoken to me. Like I can take all sorts of abuse. It really doesn't bother me, but there's some times where I know I'm in the right and, and the person has, has given me wrongfully shit about something. Oh, let's come up with an example. Something ha there was a mix up in the kitchen. I'm a fine dining server. There was a mix up in the kitchen and I was trying to remedy it. And, and the, the boss person said something about it's not all about me. Like I have to care about the guests, which was the most insulting thing to me because I just absolutely lose myself in my work. I don't, you can treat me like shit and I will make sure that you are happy by the end of it. You know, like I'm absolutely selfless in the position, but <laughs> I didn't stand up for myself then. I just said, you, what did I say? Oh, I just said something like, you know, you're being a dick right now. You know that that's not the case. But I would have spoken more honestly. I, I should have. So I beat myself up about this because why? Because if I'm, if I'm absolutely honest with my feelings about it, in my mind, I could lose my job. I doubt it would happen. It could. I would lose my job and then I won't be able to pay my mortgage. Would I find another job? Yeah. But I, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hunker this down to what the, what the deal was as to why I'm not speaking up for myself in certain situations. But then that, see, this begins the, the horrible thing, the horrible power of lack of integrity in those moments where I'm not standing up for myself. Well, who the fuck is going to stand up for me? Me. I'm it. There's no one else in the world I can depend on. So if I'm not going to stand up for me, no one's going to stand up for me. And then I start to lose respect for myself. It, let's say you have a partner and you're like, ah, oh, this partner is my partner. They're going to stand up for me. And they're going to love me. And that person doesn't stand up for you, like in these situations and doesn't have your back and doesn't believe in you, eventually be like, what the fuck, man? I, this partner is maybe not the, doesn't care about me, but there's no partner. It's yourself. So when you do this, you're absolutely harming your, your integrity, your personal integrity. I wonder if that's where fear comes from. You know, like if we can all stem down to what we're the most afraid of and then not conquering that fear or doing the small things that help support not doing the small things to stand up for what we believe in and to continue our integrity that wears on us more than missing a mortgage payment. I mean, it, it, the mortgage payment is a much more bright example. It's in the face. It's math but letting someone speak to you. So what are, what are you, what, what can you trace back to fear and what kind of decisions are you not making or making to protect the thing from not happening? Okay. The other thing that I think goes with what Bob was afraid of and, and people in relationships, 
Well, first, let me ask you, have you noticed, have you noticed that people are not very genuine? I, even when people, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but oftentimes I'll meet people and just have like a quick minute interaction, but there's something lacking in it. It's, it's, I feel like it's a fear of themselves going outside of themselves and expressing what they really think or what they really feel or what they really want to do at the moment. It's, it's very oppressive, but it's not the world that's oppressing them. It's themselves. So I, I wonder if this goes to relationships in any way. Here's what I mean. I think some people are very afraid of losing an important relationship. Let's call it a significant other. I think a lot of times people are afraid to be themselves around new people because they might not be accepted. But I think this is one of the easiest things to remedy because it's an automatic, immediate filtration system. So when I was, when I was online dating, (laughs) I would tell people like all the things that they might find negative about me because I had heard it from other people. I'm strong. I'm bold. I'm not afraid, which isn't very feminine. So I would let people know that. And some friends were like, no, Jennifer, no, don't tell them this. Like let them judge for themselves. And I said, no, I need them to know the possibility is there. It's automatically, this is exactly who I am. Do you like it or don't you? Okay. Do you like it or don't you? And I think a lot of people will go into a relationship on their best behavior. They send their represent their, they send their best representative forward, but then they slowly have to take that representative away and add who they really are. And they're so displeased with the juxtaposition of who they really are and the representative that they've sent for the proxy dates, you know, the first 20 proxy dates that they feel, they feel bad. And then, and the negative things can start to happen and they're afraid they're going to lose a relationship because it was based on bullshit. This is all from suicide. This is what I thought about from suicide. What do you think? Am I totally off base on this? I want to know what you think. I want to know what you're afraid of. And I want to know if you are willing, can you trace down directly from your big fear and the small actions, the smallest action that you make that you don't like that causes you to lose self-esteem, self-respect, or self-trust? Those small actions the smallest grain from the tree of fear. What is that? That most small root. Am I making sense? Whew. You know, I had people over last night. <laughs> I might not be making sense. Anyway, that's the video that I have today. I really like you. I like it when there's Ghost Cog or something. I think that's your name that's been commenting. I've been really enjoying you. And all the people that comment, thank you so much. Uh, I'd love for you to subscribe. You don't have to. Hey, personal responsibility. Maybe you don't feel like it. And you're like, Jennifer, this would totally go against everything that I am. And then I'd lose self-respect if I, if I, if I dared subscribe to your channel. I would just absolutely hate myself and don't do it. But if you wouldn't hate yourself, you could subscribe. Okay, have a good day. Don't kill yourself. Yourself.